In this video, we're going to create a brand new grade scheme. You will need to do this if you want to have grades or feedback display for students in a specific method that is not included in one of the default schemes, which are percentages and letter grades, or if you want to alter the letter grade scheme specifics. First, we're going to create an edited version of the existing letter grade scheme. Now you do this if you use a different letter grade scale than the default OCU scheme in the system, but want to keep the overall same structure as the given scheme. Then after we do that, we'll go in and create a totally new scheme from scratch. Now to create an alternative letter scheme, first go to your gradebook and then click on the schemes link. Then here under the more actions menu, select copy. This is going to bring up a list of any schemes you have already created, plus the system-wide letter grade scheme. Now it's possible you're only gonna see this very first letter grade scheme. That's probably the one you're going to want to check and then you click the copy button. This will create a duplicate letter grade scheme that you can edit. To edit it, click on the copy of letter grades link. Now you can edit your scheme. First, I would recommend changing the name up here to something more specific. You may wanna name it after yourself or after the term in which it's being created. Then you can make any edits to the scheme that you wish. You can change the start values, you can change the letter symbols, or you can change the assigned value. Note that the assigned value column can also be left blank unless you want to use select box grade columns, which is a grading kind of column in which you select a scheme grade from a drop down menu. Most of the time you're going to be using numeric grade columns and so this assigned value doesn't really matter. You can also remove ranges using the trash can buttons, or you can add ranges with this add ranges link. Let's say for this example that I wanna change my A from being 93 and above to being 95 and above. I'll need to make the change there in the start percentage, and then if I have something in the assigned value, I'll need to change it there as well. Then I click save and close. And now I have a customized grade scheme that I can set as the course default by clicking the set as default checkbox, and then the yes column, or I can leave the default let's say the percentage, and I can employ this Amanda's grade scheme for various and specific columns or categories throughout my gradebook. But what if you need a grade scheme that is completely different from any of the system templates? Then you're going to need to create a scheme from scratch. So you do that by clicking the new scheme button. Now here is a blank screen where you can build whatever kind of grading system you want. For example, I wanna set up an excellent satisfactory, unsatisfactory, and absent system. I don't plan on ever letting students see the number grades. I only want them to see these four words for each grade column. I'll start by giving my system a name. We'll call it E-S-U-A for our excellent, satisfactory, unsatisfactory, absent. But you can call it whatever you want. Now it's time for me to fill in these ranges, okay? Now you always need to work from worst to best in D2L schemes. So I'll start by writing absent, unsatisfactory, satisfactory in the symbol columns. Now I need one more option, so I'll click the add ranges link, and then I'll add the word excellent. Now in this example, even though I'm not gonna really use number grades with my students, I still need to assign them in the scheme for the gradebook to work properly. So you have to put in some start values. I'll say for this example that if the student earns an excellent, that's equivalent to a 93 or above. A satisfactory is equivalent to a 75 or above. An unsatisfactory is equivalent to a 40 or above. And that leaves absent equaling everything from zero to 39. Again, if you don't intend on using numbers at all in your gradebook, these scores are arbitrary. But if you do intend to use any sort of calculations or if you wanna enter numbers for your students and then have these ranges names show up, you'll wanna pay close attention to them. Now, if you have numeric grade columns and you choose a scheme like this one, like I've set up right here, you can always enter a number. Let's say I enter an 80, and then whatever range it corresponds to is gonna show up in the gradebook if I've selected that scheme to be displayed. So in this example, if I typed in an 80, it would show up to be a satisfactory. Another option you have, however, if you wanna use a scheme like this, is that you can select, instead of a numeric column, you can have a selector column that's gonna allow you to actually select one of these words from the list. And if you do that, then you have the option of assigning an assigned value to each column, and that assigned value is the number that D2L would substitute for the word absent, satisfactory, unsatisfactory, and excellent if you were having it do any grade calculations. So just for the sake of argument, I'm gonna go ahead and copy over 
the numbers into the assigned value category. One other option you have is that you can choose a color to show up in the grade book for each of these levels in your course. That kind of allows you to see at a glance how people are doing. And it's really easy to do that from this little drop down menu. But the only fields that you must fill in are the symbol column and the start percentage column. So for now, I'm going to leave my assigned values here and leave the color ones blank. And then I'll click save and close. And now, just like before, I can choose this scheme as the default for my course, or I can assign it to individual columns.